Rightly Dividing Ephesians Study Guide by Mary Ann Manley. Rightly Dividing Ephesians Study Guide Copyright 2022 by Mary Ann Manley Cover by Madeleine Wilkinson. Acknowledgement. To God be the glory for helping me write this book. I am grateful for the support of my dear husband Chuck and my children during this time. I would like to thank some of the many grace pastors who have helped me understand God's word rightly divided, Les Feldick, Richard Jordan, Tom Brescia, Rick Jordan, David Reed, David Osteen, Paul Lucas, and others. I was particularly helped by Sean Brousseau's informative articles on forwatsethscriptures.org. I am delighted with the cover and artwork for the hymns by Madeleine Wilkinson. I thank Leanne Miko and others for their memes. I am grateful for Patty Carlson for her verse and sign making, art poster on the author page and help in the ministry, and the help of my other students. In preparing these books, I primarily read and study the Word of God over and over again until the Holy Spirit helps me to understand His Word better, but I also listen to sermons, read articles, and books. Asterisk and note from the author. After teaching all of Paul's letters and writing commentaries on them I am going through his letters again taking a closer look at each and every paragraph in conjunction with my more seasoned understanding. This is the new Closer Walk series of the rightly dividing of Paul's mystery letters from the rest of the Bible, Prophecy. The goal is to help accelerate the reader's spiritual growth and understanding of the Bible. This study guide is meant to be used along with the King James Bible. When some verses are found in Ephesians, I write 111 instead of F. 111, how to use this book, skim it first and read it using a ruler and a pen. When you find a great cross-reference or comment, you can mark it in your Bible, circle and color important words, make notes so that you have them. Next time you read that passage, I recommend the Schofield Study Bible 3 in the King James Version. It is wise to get a leather cover for it that holds a pen and zips. I recommend reading God's Secret A Primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth before this book. For a more complete between the Bible text analysis, please read our commentaries on all of Paul's letters, Acts and Hebrews. We have a salvation booklet. All glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation made easy to understand. Rightly dividing explained simply and the key verse. Background. Introduction. Table of contents. Ephesians outline. Review Sentences Edification Process Summary of Ephesians Timeline Ephesians Chapter 1 The Father's Wise Plan and the Mystery of His Will Ephesians Chapter 2 Our Part in the Household of God, His Temple Calvinism Error Ephesians Chapter 3 The Body of Christ Was a Mystery Which Mystery? Ephesians chapter 4 The church increases as members edify each other Ephesians chapter 5 Submission in the church and union with Christ Ephesians chapter 6 The church is to be one army of soldiers Parenting tips The blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and the body of Christ About the author Other books by Marianne Manley Poem, What the Church is Not, page 30, Hymns, I Know I'm Seated in Heavenly Places, page 46, Onward Christian Soldier, page 85, In All Thy Work, O Lord, page 105, Spiritual, Warfare, The Sword, Of the Spirit, Salvation Made Easy to Understand, The Bible Says, God by His Grace Freely Imputes Righteousness Without Works to Everyone That Trusts I N, God the Son Jesus Christ, By Believing, how that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 4. 2 COR 521 ROM 3 colon 10 28 ROM 4 colon 4 25 F 2 colon 8 9 KJB. Mads. Paul's gospel is justification by faith, believe and receive his righteousness. God made him to be sin. For us. Sin. He took that we might be made the righteous. Ness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. My sin, righteousness, of God, I received, his righteousness. Rightly dividing explained simply and the key verse. Your Bible simplified. But now, Acts 9, Romans, Philemon, the fellowship of the mystery, F. 3 colon 9 KJB. Time passed. Genesis Acts 8 Prophecy to Israel Ages T.O. Come Hebrews Revelation Prophecy to Israel Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
2 Timothy 2 verse 15 KJB Ephesians is a letter to and about the body of Christ, not Israel. Israel, body of Christ. Don't claim your neighbor's mail. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth. Not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul, 2T215 KJV Background How long did it take Paul to write the letter to the Romans? The answer is three months, Acts 20 verse 3. It was during his three-month stay at the home of Gaius in Corinth that he wrote that letter, Rom. 1623. Romans was a treatise on the doctrine which he taught in Ephesus at the school of Tyrannus after Paul witnessed the power of doctrine working in the believers. The Jews and Greeks that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed, Acts 19 verses 19 and 20. It was then that Paul decided he had to go to other places and continued teach the powerful sound doctrine Jesus Christ was revealing to him. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome, Acts 19 verse 21. Paul had planned to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, 1 Cor. 16 colon 8, but he was forced to leave sooner because of the uproar, Acts 19 40, 20 colon 1, a revolt against him and his teaching instigated by the smiths who made metal shrines to the goddess Diana. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians on his through Macedonia, and then took the long way to Corinth through Illyricum. When he arrived to winter in Corinth he taught the doctrine which he wrote down in Romans. Then he traveled to Israel to deliver money collected in the Pauline churches to the poor kingdom saints in Jerusalem. He was arrested in the temple there and spent two years in jail in Caesarea, where he studied the scriptures, before being shipped under arrest to Rome. Paul wrote Ephesians, the first of his prison epistles, Colossians, Philemon, Philippians, while on a house arrest for two years in Rome. Paul had said, and I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, Rom. 1529, Ephesians is the complete and full blessing of the mystery given to Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ. While Romans is the foundational doctrine for the body of Christ, Ephesians is advanced doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. In Ephesians, Paul writes to the body of Christ as a whole. We find out that only God is wise enough to use the rebellion of Lucifer, Satan, and Adam for his own advantage and solve man's sin problems so that he might fill all believers in two realms with the spirit of his own son. The Battle for Your Mind Facebook Invitation Text Message Billboard Charticle Flickr Photo Podcast Personal Conversation Newspaper Article Expert on stage at event. Magazine article. Twitter comment. Persuasive email. News report on TV. Radio show. YouTube video. Direct mail piece. Song on MySpace. Recent book by expert. Product placement in movie. Introduction. In Ephesians is about the Father's wisdom and eternal purpose in Christ. Paul introduces us to the Father's love and wisdom. Ephesians was the first prison epistles Paul wrote while on house arrest in Rome. It was carried by Tychicus along with Colossians and Philemon. One Zymus accompanied him on his return to his former master Philemon in Coloss. A mystery in scripture, a previously hidden truth now divinely revealed. Ephesians reveals the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, F. 3 9. The mystery is the formation of the church, this is capitalized because it refers to the real universal church, not the local church, the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to live in the heavenly places. Since Ephesians was written at the same time as Colossians we can use either letter to help explain the other. Philippians was written last as a thank you letter and by that time Paul was fairly confident that he would be released from confinement two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him, Acts 28 verses 30 and 31.
When we arrive at the advanced church doctrine in Ephesians, Paul expects us to already understand the foundational doctrine concerning the cross in Romans, Corinthians, and Galatians, justification, sanctification, dispensation, glorification, and our service as we offer our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through. We understand the facts by faith so his spirit can produce fruit. Paul wrote to seven churches in Rome, Corinth, Galatia, a territory with several churches, Ephesus, Philippi, Coloss, and Thessalonica and four pastoral epistles to three men, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Paul's letters provide detailed instructions for the position, walk, and destiny of the body of Christ. In this letter, we will learn how to put on the whole armor of God, 6 11 13. The mystery began with the appearing of the glorified, risen, ascended, Lord Jesus Christ to Saul of Tarsus, Paul, on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, Acts 9 colon 6, 26 colon 16 dash 18, 2 11, and ends with the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, Titus 2 verse 13. The two appearings form the parenthesis on either side of the dispensation of grace in which we live. When God has finished forming the body of Christ the fullness of the Gentiles, Rom. 1125 will be brought to pass, the purpose God formed this group to love and serve Him and have the privilege to live with Him. After we are caught up, to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. For 17, God will resume saving more believers in the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32. The Israel of God, Gal. 1616, Peter's group will be a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, to go between the Gentiles and the Lord Jesus Christ during Christ's millennial reign, Matt. 28 colon 18 dash 20, Rom. 11 colon 25 dash 27. Then after the great white throne judgment of the lost will begin the dispensation of the fullness of times when the time is full for those in heaven and earth that have believed God to serve him. God will have worked all things together for his purpose and every believer in his kingdom will have the spirit of his son, his life, in them. Paul was converted by grace through faith and chosen by God to be the apostles of the Gentiles, Rom. 1113. He preached Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625. Salvation apart from going through Israel, apart from the law, which is by faith in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for our sins, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. When we believe what the Son of God did for us, we receive his righteousness, 2 Cor. 521. This is justification by faith and access to God, Rom. 5 colon 1, 2. Pale most likely received the rest of the revelation of the mystery during his diligent study of the scriptures while incarcerated for two years in Caesarea, 26 colon 24. He said in his letter to the Romans, And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ, Rom. 1529. In his manifold wisdom God progressively revealed his plan of salvation and restitution of heaven and earth. So Satan would not know it all at once. It was given to Paul to fulfill, complete or finish, the word of God, Colossians 1 verse 25. Paul wrote the last words of Jesus Christ. For this reason, Paul also helps Peter's group to understand how they, his earthly kingdom believers, fit into God's manifold wisdom in his great twofold purpose and plan to gather both realms, heaven and earth, into one and rule over both. The three main doctrines in the dispensation of grace. Romans, faith, justification, sanctification, dispensation, service, Rom. 12 colon 1, Ephesians, love, the church, the body of Christ. Thessalonians, hope, the coming of Christ for the church at the rapture, and next is Christ's second coming to the believers in Israel after the tribulation. I, our wealth in Christ. A, salutation, 1 colon 1, 2. Chapter 1. Ephesians Outline A. Prays for Spiritual Blessings 1 colon 3 14 B. Prayer for Spiritual Enlightenment and Power 1 colon 15 23 Chapter 2 A. Our New Position in Christ 2 colon 1 10 B. Our Corporate New Relation in Christ 2 colon 11 22 Chapter 3 A. Revealing the Mystery of the Church 3 colon 1 12. B. Prayer to comprehend the fullness of God. 3 colon 12 21. 2. Our walk in warfare in Christ. Chapter 4 6. 
In regard to the church corporately, for colon 1-16, in regard to believers individually, for colon 17-5 five colon 2, in regard to other believers and those in darkness, 5 colon 3-21, in regard to special relationships, 5 colon 22-6 colon 9, in regard to satanic spirit powers, 6 colon 10-20, 3 conclusion, 6 colon 21-24. The order of Paul's Acts epistles including when and where they were written. Galatians, Acts 15 verse 35, Antioch, AD 52 star, AD 63 star, Rome, 1 Thess, AD 63, Acts 18 verse 5, Corinth, AD 53, 2 Thess, Acts 18 verse 11, Rome, AD 63, Corinth, AD 53, the order of Paul's post-Acts epistles and when and where they were written. F. Colonel Philemon, Phil, 1 Tim, Titus, Rome, Rome, 1 Cor, A.D. 63, Acts 19 verse 10, Ephesus, A.D. 56, 2 Cor, Acts 20 verse 1, Macedonia, A.D. 57, Macedonia A.D. 65, Macedonia, AD 65, Romans, Acts 20 verse 3, Corinth, AD 58, 2 Tim, Rome, AD 67, asterisk approximate dates, grace is defined as God's unmerited favor, it is all the Father is free to do for us because of the finished cross work of his Son, the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ, review sentences, 1, spiritual blessings in heavenly places and prayer for understanding, 2. Our lost position in time passed individually and corporately, but now God. 3. The revelation of the mystery and prayer for power and comprehension. 4. Walk worthy. The body increases as the members edify each other in love. 5. Walk in love. Christ loved the church like a husband is to love his wife. The church should be subject to Christ as a wife is to be to her husband. 6. Instructions to parents, children, and servants. Our warfare and armor. The prison epistles are primarily addressed the body of Christ corporately. Ephesians is Christ's exposition of the mystery to us through Paul. It is advanced doctrine and practice for the body of Christ. Colossians exalts Jesus Christ as the preeminent head of the church. It warns the believer to beware of any teaching that would demote Christ or teach a doctrine other than the mystery which the Lord gave to us through Paul. Philemon is a picture of how God solved the sin problem. It teaches us how to communicate with others. Philippians is an exquisite thank you letter encouraging believers in superior spiritual growth and unity. Ephesians is, one, primarily about the body of Christ corporately, two, the Father's will, plan, purpose, and destiny for the church, the body of Christ, three, and his plan to exalt his beloved son as the preeminent ruler over heaven and earth. It is also about the mystery of Christ and the love of Christ for the church and how the believer can walk worthy of that love. In chapter one, we learn that the body of Christ has an inheritance in heaven. The kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven and earth. Both realms have governmental structures, thrones, principalities, dominions, etc. In chapter 2, Paul tells us of our corporate time past, but now, and ages to come. God's temple or household or family in his kingdom is a duplex. One side is for Israel on earth, and the other for the body of Christ in heaven. In chapter 3, Paul focuses on our part of the habitation of God, the mystery, the formation of the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace. The rest of the letter, chapters 4 to 6, are about how we are to walk worthy as members of the body of Christ and the warfare of the believer. Edification process. The canon of scripture is in the order for our edification. Paul's 13 letters to the body of Christ builds an edifice of sound doctrine in our souls. An edifice is a building. We can picture Paul's 13 letters as a two-story house. The first foundation is Romans. The Corinthian letters and Galatians form the walls of the first story. The foundational doctrine in Romans must be understood before proceeding to the advanced doctrine of Ephesians. The foundation of the second story is Ephesians. Philippians and Colossians form the walls of this level. 
Then the Thessalonian letters put the roof on top with the hope of the first, one Thess, and second coming of Christ, two Thess. The edification process. Second Thessalonians. Philippians. Ephesians. Second. Corinthians. First Thessalonians. Galatians. Romans. Colossians. First Corinthians. Then first and second Timothy. Titus and Philemon are related to grace living with respect to the local church. They are how to live in the house. The goal is to understand all of the Bible from a Pauline perspective. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7. Summary of Ephesians. The letter is to and about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is chosen before the foundation of the world, 1 colon 4, not the believers. Paul reveals the mystery of the Father's will to gather the heaven and the earth together in one in the dispensation of the fullness of times under Christ. Paul prays for us to be enlightened by the Father did a work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. His Son is exalted far above and is the head of the church, the body of Christ. Paul made clear our lost condition in time past when we walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, but God was merciful and loving to us and now believers are quickened and made spiritually alive with Christ and seated in the heavenly places together with him. In time past the Gentiles had no hope and were without God and had no part in Israel, God gave them up and over to a reprobate mind at the Tower of Babel. But now God is giving the Gentiles another chance and is offering the Gentiles grace and peace. In the ages to come God will put the body of Christ on display to a testimony of his wisdom and the exceeding riches of his grace. The body of Christ now has a part in the bigger household of God, made up of heaven and earth believers. Paul then clearly and concisely explains that the mystery of Christ is the formation of the body of Christ and the dispensation of the grace. The fellowship of this mystery is that both saved Jews and saved Gentiles are in one group. The circumcision is not above the uncircumcision in our group for we are all on the same level in this body of believers. The Father had manifold wisdom and the Son great love to save us. Paul prays for us to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in our heart by faith so we can be rooted and grounded in love and understand the Father's manifold wisdom that the good and bad angels are learning about and that we may comprehend what God said and be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul glorifies the Father's wisdom and the Son's love and the power of his spirit in us for all eternity. Ephesians is primarily a treatise on the body of Christ as a whole. Paul introduces us to the Father and his purpose and destiny for the body of Christ and the exaltation of his Son as preeminent ruler over heaven and earth. The body of Christ is sealed in Christ by the Holy Spirit of promise, the earnest of the entire purchase possession is to be raptured. Each individual has the Holy Spirit in them, and the entire body of Christ is sealed. The mystery of his, the Father's, will is to have one kingdom with only believers with two realms in heaven and on earth. The body of Christ are to the praise of his glory. Paul prays for the enlightenment of the believers to understand Father God and his plan for them. Paul uses us, we, you, ye plural you because he is writing about the corporate body of Christ. The time passed, but now, and ages to come of the body of Christ. The house of God, 219, the temple of God, 221, and family of God, 315, describe the kingdom of God with Christ as the chief cornerstone which could be pictured as a cross, because he redeemed both groups. Both Peter, 1 Peter 2 verse 6, and Paul, F. 220, call Christ the chief cornerstone. Christ is the foundation, one core. 311, there are prophets on top of that foundation. There are 12 apostles in prophecy and one apostle in mystery. The mystery of Christ is the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of the grace. Paul is writing down the previously unknown revelation for us. Unity of the faith in the church, 413. There is a sevenfold unity of the body of Christ. Other people besides the apostles Paul were gifted by the Spirit to edify the body of Christ in the early church, its beginning. The goal is for everyone to understand the truth of the mystery and speak the truth in love. Share this truth with others and to edify each other. We are to walk worthy of our vocation as ambassadors and members of the body of Christ. We are to put off the old man, 
the flesh, and put on the new, Christ. If we don't get along with each other, we give place to the devil, and we grieve the Holy Spirit that has sealed the body of Christ until it is redeemed, raptured. Follow God and walk in love toward those in the body of Christ. Be self-sacrificing like Christ. Be thankful and not like the lost, the unsaved. His Spirit in us will produce good fruit. Share the truth of the mystery. Let there be harmony among the body of Christ. Be thankful and submit yourselves to one another. Christ loved the church as a husband is to love his wife. The church should submit to Christ like a wife to her husband. The body is joined to our head. Children obey your parents. Parents train up you children in the Lord. Our master is in heaven, serve him whether you are an employer or employee for which one of those you are does not matter to God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God and stand against Satan. He is the one that is against the mystery. Our shield is the faith Christ gave to Paul. The belt is that truth. The helmet is to know in your mind the certainty of the blessed hope, our pre-tribulation rapture. As ambassadors serving the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven we are to boldly share the mystery. All our blessings are in heavenly places and our enemies are there right now. Entrance into the body of Christ is by the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 colon 7, 2 13. Our hope is in the person of Jesus Christ. To preach the gospel, Pauline doctrine, requires great boldness because Satan is against it. Mainline Christianity has been diluted by him. Everyone in the body of Christ are saved, but many in denominational churches are not. Satan doesn't want anyone to see the truth of the mystery that has been revealed, he wants to conceal it. If someone has come to understand the mystery, the devil wants them to be moved away from this truth. Currently Satan is in both heaven and earth, 2 colon 2, 2 core. 4 colon 2. Three themes of this epistle are, 1, the fathers will for heaven and earth, 2, our calling to be part of the habitation of God, and 3, our unity as members of the body of Christ. We are a team that have been saved by grace. People saved by grace should act like who they are in Christ, not live like lost unbelievers. We are to walk worthy, walk in love, and walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. The body of Christ should be subject to Christ just like a wife is to be to her husband in everything. As we stand our ground together, in the power of his, Christ's, might against Satan's onslaughts, we will succeed in spreading the understanding of the mystery to others. We fight from victory since Christ has already won the war. Our responsibility is to hold on to that victory by standing our ground and sharing the fellowship of the mystery, save Jews and Gentiles in one heaven-bound group. 4. GL GGG GGGG Ephesians was the first prison epistle Paul wrote on. S.E. Arrest in Rome Paul said, The salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him, Acts 28 verses 28 to 31. The Bible is laid out prophecy mystery prophecy. Time passed Genesis to John prophecy. But now Romans to Philemon mystery. Ages to come Hebrews to Revelation prophecy. Acts is a transition book from Christ's ministry on earth to Christ's ministry in heaven, from Peter to Paul, from God dealing with the nation of Israel to God dealing with the body of Christ, from prophecy to mystery. Time. Past. C.I.R. Israel. Middle wall. But now. Fall. Paul. Timeline. Colossians 1 verses 25 to 27. Grace. Acts 9. Unser Gentiles. Gen Mal. Matt. Jorax 1 to 7 Rom. Phil. Israel. Body of Christ. Prophecy. Mystery. Ages to come. Seven years. Trib Daniel 70. Weak Antichrist. Hebrews. 1000. Reign. Of Christ. To Reverend Israel. Prophecy. Time past. Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, f. 2.11, 12. But now, 
but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, f. 2.13, ages to come, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, f. 2.7.